we're looking at using VBA to create buttons for super fast data input. So firstly, what do we mean by super fast data input? Let's just remind ourselves. This is a good example. This is something we've developed for a client in education. And the idea is, um, as students are walking into the classroom, the teacher can just click on the buttons and it records the students as present. And you can see it also records the time that they came into the classroom. Also very easy to reverse a decision. If you click on the, the wrong button, just click on the button again and you can see it reverses it there. So super quick and easy to use, exactly what you need if you're a teacher and you've got kids coming into the classroom, you're thinking about uh, getting a lesson started. And it avoids the need to use the keyboard, avoids the, key, avoids the need even to use a drop down menu. So really quick, uh, fast mechanism. That's what we're gonna look at creating in this video series. So I'll shut this file down so that we start with uh, a brand new Excel file, and that's what I've got here. And let's look at the first step, which is just to create a button. Now we could, of course, do this using shapes. And I do see you know, a lot of shapes in spreadsheets these days, but for me, buttons are better for this task because when a user sees a button, uh, they intuitively think, oh, I can click on that, and that might do something useful if I click on it. So my personal preference is for using buttons as opposed to shapes for this kind of thing. But I've just clicked um, on button there, that's through uh, developer, insert, form controls, button. And then you can see the cursor has changed to a cross, so Excel is ready to create a button. Now, what are some things to bear in mind here? It's a good idea to hold down the Alt key, and that's gonna lock the button uh, to the grid. That's gonna help it look neat and tidy. And you can see the button that we've created there is nicely locked to the grid. I'll just do that again, because I wanna mention the macro creation element. Hold down the Alt key, and we've created a button that's locked to the grid. We can't see it yet, because Excel is already asking us if you want to assign a button to the macro. We don't assign a macro to the button rather. We don't want to do that yet, so we can just hit cancel on this dialog box. And we can see when we hover the cursor over the button, um, there's no option to click on the button because there's no macro assigned to it there. So we've just got a button there, no macro uh, assigned to it. So that's what we've got. And the next step would be to look at creating multiple buttons. And clearly it would be very frustrating to have to manually copy, paste, and position those buttons. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video series. How can we automate that process? Make it happen, click of a button, no stress. Um, so how do we get started with that? Well, a good way to get started with code generally, something that you'll see a lot in the videos on this channel, is to record some code. So get the uh, Visual Basic Editor recording code, do what you want to do, and then subsequently review the code. That's like gold dust. Um, for the Excel developer, seeing how Excel records in code what you're actually doing in the spreadsheet. So let's try to do that. So I've hit developer tab and gonna hit record macro now. And let's give the macro a meaningful name. And that's important later when we're looking at all of the routines stacked up in the Visual Basic Editor, it's really useful to be able to understand uh, what this routine does just by looking at the name of the routine. So copy paste button seems sensible. Let's hit OK. And um, Excel is now recording the code. We can tell it's recording, looking in the developer tab, and this icon that was record macro is now stop recording. That shows us that Excel is recording what we're doing at the moment. So. Just gonna select the button, Control C, Control V, using the keyboard shortcuts, Control C, Control V, and that has copy pasted the button. So that's, that's what we want for now, that's enough for us. We'd like to see how does Excel understand what we've done programmatically, how does Excel express it in VBA? So let's stop recording, so Excel's no longer recording code. So now we want to access that code, we want to find it, so that we can uh, amend it and use it uh, for some kind of useful purpose. So Alt F11, Alt F11 shortcut to open up the Visual Basic Editor, and there it is. And you'll have a module in there because Excel would have created a module to record the codes, uh, to store the code 
rather that we just reported. So double click in module one. And this is the code that we just created. I'm going to clear out these annotations at the top and then we can review the code. And Visual Basic is generally quite a friendly programming language. So just by reading through the code and understanding the English, you should get a sense uh, for what's going on. So looking at this code, what are the important lines? What are the lines that we want to retain and then use um, to speed this task up? Well, this selection.copy line looks interesting, and this active sheet.paste line looks interesting too. The other lines, they're to do with, well, we certainly don't need them. We don't need to go into their purpose. So let's delete the stuff we don't need, simplify the matter. And then these three lines here look interesting to me. Firstly, selecting the shape, copying the shape, and then pasting the shape. That's exactly uh, what we're looking for. Um, so this line for selecting the shape, uh, we can simplify this. So let's just try active sheet dot shapes. And then we don't need a full stop there, button to dot select and then selection dot copy. So I know that we can simplify this code further. If you can, it's much better to have one line of code rather than two, it's going to run faster and it's less code to maintain. So let's simplify this. I know that we can say uh, button to dot copy. That should get the job done. And then active sheet uh, dot paste. So this code as it is um, should just copy that button again. And if we run it a few times, I'll run it a few times now, we should just see the buttons appearing on the spreadsheet which we can see there. I'm trying to line this up so we can see the buttons appearing on the screenshot. There we go. Okay, so this, this is a good start. Um, we've worked out, recorded some code, we've tweaked it, cleared out the stuff we don't need, streamlined the code a bit, and then we're just kind of playing with it, running the code, seeing what happens in the spreadsheet, and it seems like it's doing what we want it to do, which is generating uh, new buttons. So that's a good start for us. Gonna do one more thing um, in this video, which is if you're generating buttons like this, uh, you want to avoid the situation where you're deleting them all manually. So it would be nice to have a quick way to just uh, delete the buttons that we don't need. Obviously, yeah, we can click on them and delete them. You know, that's fine, but it will get onerous. So what are the other options? We could do this programmatically, of course, but there's a nice option in Excel here. Uh, if we go to Home, and then over on the right, outside of your screenshot, over on the right, there's an option find and select, and then go to find and select and select objects. And you can see that the cursor is now a mouse pointer, and this puts Excel in what I would call a kind of PowerPoint mode, because it means we can click, hold, and drag over some shapes or buttons like this. All of those buttons are going to be selected. So it's a bit like PowerPoint where you can select a load of shapes, and, you know, delete them or resize them. It puts Excel in that kind of mode. So really good for working with shapes and buttons. So I've just selected the shapes like that and then I'm going to hit delete. Select this um, final button here and hit delete. So that's a nice way, something good to remember when working with shapes or buttons. If you want to delete them, or do something else to a group of shape or buttons, that's home, then outside of your screenshot, find and select, then select objects. One thing to remember, uh, you do have to exit the select objects mode because Excel will not behave normally while you're in uh, the select objects mode. Um, so you can do that by hitting escape or doing what I just did there, double clicking a cell, and that's gonna take Excel back to normal operation. Okay, so that's the first video, and we talked about creating a button, then using code to copy-paste a button. So we got to a situation where we can run that code multiple times and create loads of buttons. So already we're beginning to save ourselves some time. In the next video, we're going to look at positioning those buttons so they're all nicely positioned, nicely lined up, so we don't have to line those up manually. That's going to save us a lot of time uh, working with the spreadsheet. See you in the next video.